Hi again everybody, Greg Hughes here from 90 Second Website Builder. I'm going to show you a video today that I just got a request for. I feel like I'm back to my old disc jockey days and taking requests. A video that somebody called and asked about, about how to work with the page properties, which is a great question. So I'm going to go over that in 90 Second Website Builder here. I told this person, and I tell a lot of people when I talk to you on the phone, uh, when I work with 90 Second Website Builder, the most common tools that I work with are of course the text tool and the image tool. The text tool of course is what allows me to create text and with that text I'll create hyperlinks etc. And then of course the image tool because most of a website is made up of text and images. Now of course there are dozens and dozens of other tools and features on a website and certainly you can do lots of those things with 90 Second Website Builder. But when somebody calls and asks, hey, where, how do I get started? What, where should I begin in building a website? It's, uh, I often tell people, well, at the very least, you should learn to work with the text tool, the image tool, and the page properties window. So it's pretty important. But at the very least, we should, we should learn to work with these three tools. So the text tool, of course, you should know about. The uh, image tool you do. But the page properties is an, is an important aspect of your website. Now to get there, what I normally do is I right click on my canvas like this and I go down to page properties. Now you'll notice I needed to right click out into an empty space. If I right click on an object, I'm going to get the properties for that particular object. And if I had a background image here, like this one, which you can't see, see this is actually an image, but it's white. And I've had people say, boy, I right click on my canvas and I'm not seeing page properties. It's because they're right clicking on an object, even though they can't see that object, because maybe it's the whole background, or like in my case, it's white and it's kind of invisible. So when you right click on an object, you have a different menu than when you right click on a blank area of the canvas. So that's what you want to do. Now, if you absolutely can't find a blank area of the canvas, don't worry. You can also always go up to the menu and go to page and go to page properties. So there's usually more than one way to get somewhere. But this is where we're trying to get page properties. Whether we do it that way or whether we do it this way, we're going to get to the same spot, the page properties window. Let's talk about what's in here. Page properties has one, two, three, four, five, six important tabs. The first one is the general tab. And the very first thing that comes up is a way for you to title your page. This is really important when you're building a website. And one of the most common questions I get is, how do I change my page title to untitled page? Because when it comes up in Google, the very first thing that is listed in the Google search is the title of your page. And if yours says untitled page, it looks like your website's not really complete or finished. So one of the first things you want to do is title your page right there. And this is where you do it. And of course, the other thing you want to do is know what size uh, you're going to be working with. Now, I always like to uh, set my page size to 1024, or I should say my screen size. That's not the same as the page size. But my screen size, the target screen size, I always set to 1024 by 768. Most people have larger screens these days, and so that's a pretty good default place. What it does is it gives me a page size of 994 pixels. So that's different than the screen size. And so that's what I start with. And I have a pretty big screen on my own. But you don't have to do that. You might want to work if you have a smaller monitor and you want to accommodate smaller monitors. 800 by 600 pixels is not uncommon. That's okay. It's it's a narrower narrower website. But it's not, you know, un, completely uncommon. Anyway, that's a preference. This is also where you set the file extension for your pages. And here you can have either an HTM, HTML, which do the same thing. It doesn't matter whether you use HTML or HTM. It's a good idea to choose one and stick with it so that you don't confuse yourself, so that you don't end up having an index.htm and an index.html because they'll both be uploaded and you know it'll it'll be very confusing. So stick with one. HTML is more common. If you are using say a form on this page that requires PHP, this is where you change that. And in the working with forms video, I explain why you would want to uh, set this to PHP. But by default, it's HTML, and in most cases, that's what you want to leave it as. Also, if you've created a favicon or a favorites icon and uploaded it and want to upload it to your, your site structure, you can do that here. A favicon, we won't go into that, but for those of you that, that know how to make a favicon, um, that's the little icon that appears at the top window of your website. This is where you would upload that image. Another important feature in the page properties, especially under this general tab, is the center page property. Now, 
I almost always, when I build a website, I almost always come here and choose center this page in the browser horizontally. Now I have an entire video just on this topic and if you don't haven't watched that yet you should. It's, it's about centering your page so it will accommodate most browsers and this is where you do that. So this is really important. If you happen to be working with a web page that you're just using say to store images on or just information for yourself kind of as a utility page and you just want to keep it in your 90 second website builder project but you don't want it online when you publish you can just check this box and this page will not ever be published it will just be something you keep in your project on your computer maybe to store a collection of images just just so they're easier to get to so there's going to be a case where you don't want to publish a page that's where you would do that if you're using synchronized navigation such as with the nav bar you could keep this page out of that navigation so that if this is a page that say is a download page you don't want people to have access to unless they've opted in you can check this box and this page will not automatically be synchronized in your navigation um, if you're using a search function on your website to search pages uh, and you can do that with the form wizard but you don't want this page to be found maybe it has some hidden or protected content you could check this box so it doesn't come up in the search and then of course if you were making a sitemap same thing if you don't want this page to be included in a sitemap because sometimes when you generate these things it just picks up all your pages and and includes them in those objects so you could protect the page that way language comes up a lot you can set the character set in the page language here and I won't go into that in detail here because you can imagine the plethora of options but this is where you would do that that's the generals tab all of this stuff is pretty important when you're starting to build a website so you should know about the page properties general tab formatting is about the look of this page when we talk about background and again there's an entire video on just working with the background of your page so I won't go into absolute detail I just want you to know that it's part of the page properties window and here's where we would set the background color if we are using a background image if it repeats either or horizontally the repeat X or it repeats vertically a repeat Y or doesn't repeat at all all of that is determined here if you want the background to scroll or not and the alignment the color of your links um, you can make links that when someone hovers over a link or when they click on a link you can decide what color that is and the default uh, font on your page all of that would happen here under formatting. The meta tag is very important for those of you who are familiar with search engine optimization and you want to make sure that you have the right keywords on your page. That's where this happens. And again, there's SEO information and other videos, but this is where this is done in the page properties uh, window. And this is where you would create those meta tags or insert the content for those meta tags. For people who are using Internet Explorer as their browser, and it is between that and Firefox is the most common way to browse the Internet, you can affect the way those users see your website by editing some of these things. It's going to be rare for you to want to change this because you want to make sure that your website is compatible with Firefox, Internet Explorer, and probably Safari, which most Mac users would be browsing with. So you want to be careful with this. I would, I would just encourage you, if you play with this, to just make sure you test your website with these settings in other browsers as well. There's just some miscellaneous things here that are actually really helpful. One of them is, if this page is a redirect, this is a great feature because creating a redirect can be complicated. But you might have a web page that you're sending people to, and you decide you don't want to send people to that page anymore. So if people have been visiting this page and you prefer that they go to another page say this has got obsolete information on it but a lot of people know to come to this page you can redirect them to your new page automatically just by making this a redirected page so that when people come to this page you can redirect them to either another website or to an internal page within your website you can even determine how long that redirect should be so you might have you might want that redirect to take five or ten seconds or whatever but in most cases it would be zero but this is just a really fast way to create a redirect if you don't know what a redirect is it's okay but there are many times where redirecting a page is an important application and the reason you would use this rather than kinda of go manually make a redirect is because uh, Google cares about redirect pages. In fact, if you re if you redirect incorrectly, uh, it can it can concern Google's algorithm about your ranking. You want your redirects to be to be done appropriately. Because years ago, people used to cheat Google by redirecting people to inappropriate places. So that's that's why this is a good way to to create a redirect if you need to. Robots are an important part of search engine optimization. Again, I won't go into detail into this video, but this is where you set your robots and how many times, or rather how often they should visit. But this is really good if you want your website to be 
indexed or spidered by Google, this is where you set that. So this, if you wanted this page to be included in uh, you know, the indexing, or if you didn't want it to be included, etc., this is where you set that up. There are a lot of other uh, types of information that, that pertains just to this page that you would find in the page properties window. The last tab, of course, the events, and that is a, is a whole different video. In fact, there's a, at least a couple of videos about how to use events for the page, and this is where you would do that. Can't go into detail here, but if you want to know more about events, it's slightly advanced. Watch the events video. The point of this video is for you to know where the page properties are, what's inside, and why you would want to access them. So again, you can get to it two ways. You can right-click on a blank area of the canvas. Make sure you aren't right-clicking on an object. Even if you click on an invisible object, you won't get it. Or go up to the Page, Properties, uh, Menu Item, and you'll pull that right up. So that's just a quick overview of how to get to the Page Properties window and why it's important for you to know how to use it in ID Second Website Builder.